Ruiz. Funketeers, Bootsy here to bring the Truth and Rhythm family's attention to Funk Not Fight. Yeah, this is a call to action. We spread hope, not hate, uh, to gain satisfaction throughout our communities via the music uplifting unity. Uh, Peppermint Patty, tell us a little more. Thinker is our partner. Thinker music, that is. So please check the link that's scrolling across the bottom, click it, and submit your music. Let's all funk, funk not, not fight. fight. Welcome back to the next part of this Truth and Rhythm episode. Be sure to subscribe to this channel. If you've already done so, please share it with friends. Also become a member by joining Truth and Rhythm on Patreon or consider donating at funkinstuff.net. Thank you so much for your interest and support. Enjoy. <laughs> Did you have uh, one or two memories in particular from the road from the mid to late eighties that just really stand out for whatever reason, something funny happened, maybe just incredible performance, maybe whatever. I, I remember, um, it was my birthday and I was out on the road and, and we played like, you know, like a Madison Square Garden type of arena, you know, but it wasn't, I think it was in Rhode Island or something like that. And um, uh, I think it was Freddie, me and, and, and Levert. And we had sold the arena out. And, and I do remember, uh, you know, uh, Freddie calling me out. Uh, and say, come out, come out, Melissa, it's your birthday. Everybody wants to say hello, happy birthday to you. And I came out, you know, they had cake in the whole arena saying happy birthday. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. And LaVert came out. And it was just, you know, wonderful camaraderie. It felt really good. Yeah, that was a, one of my favorite memories during that time. Yeah. Wow. Was there anyone that in particular just blew your socks off in terms of the kind of performance that they were giving during that era? Um, you know, during that time, Patty was given those great performances, you know, that, that, that I, that I loved. Um, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really get into, you know, Janet was doing her thing and, you know, that was like a, you know, like, Oh, do we want to accomplish that kind of thing? Um, but I've always, I've always loved the simplicity of, of like what Whitney did, you know, with her concerts and stuff like that, where even though you, 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 you had the stage and all that stuff, you still let the voice, you know, speak and be the main character in the whole, you know, scenario. Yeah, I need a baker too, right? Oh, yeah, we love Anita. Yeah, we love Anita. Uh, um, I went to see her several times. Yeah, yeah, we were friends. Yeah. I she's, haven't coming, seen a, she's coming back, which is great to see. I, I haven't seen a lot of people have gone to her Las Vegas show. And they said she's coming back to do a tour. I haven't seen her. I'm going to try to put that on, on my list to go and see her. I, I really am because I, I need to see her and go say hello. Um, the third one, the lady in me, was definitely a stylistic change for you, right? Yeah, yeah. The lady in me was 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 different because now I I I left Hush Productions. <coughs> Excuse me, because like I said, uh, the business started coming in, 
And uh, you saw a production deal as opposed to a straight record deal it was like night and day. Uh, it, you did a, it, and I could talk about it now because people are now starting to talk about it. I see, you know, a lot of people talking about their, how back in the day they got the advances and it didn't work and, the, you know, but back then a production deal, you would get, you were lucky if you got $20,000 advance you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars. Maybe the next one was twenty thousand. You felt like you was rolling, but if you signed directly, once I left them and signed directly to Capital, then you're talking about a hundred and seventy-five thousand dollar advance because production people was getting that money, and you know, what I'm saying just giving you what, what you would, what they could give you that you would take. You know, so if you got 10 when you first signed because you're green and you're just happy to get a deal, then the next time you say, okay, we're going we're gonna to give you 20. You go, oh, God, I'm getting double, you know, but not knowing that that they were getting maybe 150, 200,000 and giving you 10% of it. So left Hush, signed directly with Capital. And so now we have a little bit more freedom monetary wise. You know what I'm saying? Because we're living better. And then I was able to start picking who I wanted to to produce me. Yeah. So how did you come in contact with, uh, I hope I say it right, Atala Zane Giles? The Capital. Mm -hmm. It was Capital. I had, I, had, I had actually taken someone um, that I was working with that was supposed to do like the same thing that me and Lisette did because by then Lisette was doing her thing and you know it was like okay I want to do something different and 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 Capital said come to California and they put me up in this beautiful place on the hill you know off of Sunset Boulevard you know down the street from Madonna it's just wonderful I saw Madonna running one day it was like oh my god that's Madonna so uh, uh, they put me up uh so you're going to stay here for like a year, whatever, whatever you need, and, and create. So I brought this uh, gentleman with me from New York that was a keyboard player. And uh, I thought he was going to, you know, just write songs during the day, you know, because that was my chemistry, write songs during the day. And then at night, I'll hear what you're doing. And he just fell. He fell California crazy. And then he just wouldn't write. He called go, 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 go his girlfriend to come and say California. And they went out and look who we got here. <laughs> look who we got here. Say hello, Moo. Mo. Say hi. It's a, he, it's a he or she. <laughs> it's a she. This is Spirit. Say hi, Spirit. Hi, hey, Spirit. <laughs> she ain't going to stay long. Trust me. Trust me. I just, One of our one of ours is a tabby of the three. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We just love her, and she's got gold color underneath. So say hi, spirit, and goodbye. <laughs> and there she goes. Okay, she might stay, but anyway. So he just uh, fell in love with not working. <laughs> so uh, he didn't work, and uh, so we wind up uh, firing him. And Capital says we have someone that we think you know, might work with you. And at that time, at, we just call him Zane. He lived in, in uh, Malibu. So I would have to, and this was my first time driving too. I learned how to drive because I was in California, got my license and I would have to drive from uh, Los Angeles up to Malibu, you know, uh, to work with him. And we just, yeah. yeah, we just, we just had a chemistry and, uh, we worked together and it turned out really good. Now, this album wasn't quite as successful as we thought it was going to be, you know, even with, with capital behind it, because we had somebody named MC Hammer that came in and just took over the whole Capitol Records, everything, you know. So, um, but it was fun. But it was fun. Yeah. Yeah, but they were so MC Hammer by the time that album came out that uh, nobody on the um, artist roster stood a chance. Mm. Wow, lost in the proverbial shuffle on that. Yeah, uh, yeah. You even you had uh, New Jack Swing, you know, influence was coming in on your record, which was interesting to hear. 
Yeah, you you just nobody could compete with all the money and everything that that uh, capital by that time had put into MC Hammer. They didn't want to hear anything except for MC Hammer and how successful he was going to be. And and I met him. He's a wonderful person. And that's just a, that was just a corporate decision on them that they just they just they just didn't do it. Yeah. Well, the Zane definitely funked up your sound a little bit more. Yes, he did. Uh, we, I, I enjoyed working with him. I enjoyed the diversification. Uh, I even think that uh, at one point, uh, the uh, Gladys Knight's uh, uh, son, who unfortunately passed away, he came in, you know, because he was managing her at the time. He was like, this is going to be a smash hit for you, girl. And uh, uh, we was feeling really good about it. And, 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 and now I play those songs because, you know, TikTok and everything. I play those songs on like TikTok skits and stuff. And people are like, what is that? When did you do that? Well, they, you know, because they don't know. They, they need to, you know, re-release it or something. Yeah. And I noticed um, uh, Courtney Mims and Chucky Booker on there. And Chucky Booker, I'm actually uh, interviewing tomorrow. So, but Really? Uh, yeah. Well, tell him I said hi. I yes. will. And Courtney's been on the show also. So Okay, wonderful. Yeah. Um, so then you came back with Still in Love with You. And on that one, uh, Timmy Allen, again, uh, was involved. Um, I felt like that one you were going back a little bit more to like where you had been, you know, after sort of a little bit of an experiment. Well, well, when I came after um, uh, uh, the lady and me, I came back to New York. And, and uh, if you know anything about music in, in, in New York compared to other places in music, when you get back here, everybody, the first thing they say once you've been in LA, you did something, you need to get back to your New York roots. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get back to your New York, your New York style. That's when you was hit. That's when you were blah, blah. So we, you know, we we hooked up with Ruben Rodriguez. May he rest in peace. And uh, Timmy and and all my New York people. And uh, we got back to the New York roots. Yeah, uh, uh, Bernard Bell. You know, with the Steel and Love. May he rest in peace because he passed away. And uh, we just. Uh, we just tried to get back to that New York thing that, that, you know, where I'm born and bred and raised. Yeah. Yeah. I really like uh, Through the Tears. That's got like just some real grit to it. Yeah. I, 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 I thought that was going to do really much better than it did. Um, uh, and I only worked with that producer once. He was, he was really, really nice. And uh, uh, I just remember him taking me to... Uh, Mr. Childs in New York. Because, you know, oh, after we did it, I'm going to take you out. Da, da, da. He took me out and his credit cards, two of his credit cards got declined and I wound up having to pay for the dinner that he asked me out on. Isn't that raggedy? That's, that's, that's awkward, man. That is awkward. Yeah. <laughs> um, wow. What was your... Uh, process like in the studio, Melissa, for, you know, getting in the right frame of mind and, you know, did you typically do your parts alone or did you have people around, you know, aside from the engineer? Um, I usually didn't have many people in the studio. I didn't like that. No. I, so I, I really was alone. It, it, it was when I did it, when it was said, it was a set. If people came in and, 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 you know, friends came in and stuff like that, I would stop. Because the, the, the thing about it is, is that, you know, unfortunately, it, it, it is a business and it is competition. So if, if people came in and wanted to hear what you was doing, I wouldn't let them hear me do anything live. We, I, I would like play something that we've already done that they can hear, you know, that I'm comfortable with. Because uh, when you're creating, you know, that's that's inner and that, you know, you, you don't want anyone there with that, except for the people that you trust. Uh, do you feel like you're very self-critical? I mean, would you always like be like, oh, I didn't quite get it. I want to do it again. Or were you like, no, I'm on it. Um, I know when I get it. And then sometimes, sometimes I want to, I want to hear it 
to listen to see if I want to change it. So what we would do, we would do what we structured, what we had structured that it was supposed to be. And I would always take um, what I did home, especially before I did the lead or anything like that. I would do the background and stuff like that. And then I would take a, you know, then it was a tape. Now it's, you know, you, you, you know, send it to me, you know, on, on the internet or whatever. Give me, give me my little uh, flash drive. I would, I would, I uh, always take it home to listen to it, to make sure that I got it right, you know, and then I come back and correct it the next day and then we move on. Yeah. So, so I, I'm, I'm somewhat critical. Yeah. But here's the thing that I, I, I'm, I'm very, that I don't usually do. I usually don't go back in overdue lead. I, I usually don't go back and overdo lead vocals because what it, whatever energy you have at the beginning is usually it. Yeah. So, and you never get to, and, and I'm sure that there's a lot of singers that the, it, it amazed me when they said that, you know, um, Lizzo did that song like a hundred times. It's like, I don't understand that. Yeah, I don't know why they would make it. So something, but they was looking for something. Now there's some producers that are what I call peace producers, that they 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 want to get that one thing right and then they want to move on to the next and get that one thing right, move on to the next. But but when you're my type of singer or Aretha Franklin or something like that, or even a Whitney, you know, maybe always usually that first one is it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Going all the way back to the years in church, you know, getting that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so Melissa, after that, you took a extended break um, from music, basically. For I, I don't know if you're still performing or what, but you didn't put any records out for a while. So, what was happening in your life? Well, what happened after after um, Still in Love? I just got a little disenchanted with the industry because uh, I thought that was going to do well, and then. You know, Electra had people coming in. You know, they used to do the sit in and listen to the album and what do you think? And, and which is fine if you have the people that are going to listen to it, you know, judging and critiquing. And I hate to say, this, you can't have the, 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 the secretary from, from Long Island. And the, you know what I'm saying? The executive from wherever are some school kids that, that listen to to rock or hip hop, you can't have them critique Melissa Morgan. You know what I'm saying? You've got to have people that listen to Melissa Morgan. And they they have these 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 sessions where they have people coming in, listen to my record. And, and you know, one time I went, you know, because afterwards they'd have me come in and say hello. And I'm looking at these this diversification of people. And it's like, none of y'all listen to what to to my music. You know, I I I need someone from, from Jamaica, Queens, that, that knows Melissa Morgan. I need someone from Harlem. I need, you know what I'm saying? I, I need someone that's, you know, that's not going to, uh, you know, like I said, that, that doesn't live in Long Island, you know, so on the weekends, they don't listen to that. You know, I need someone that's going in the clubs. And Electra and Ruben kind of got that wrong. And I, I kind of got disenchanted because what happens is that when, when, when something doesn't do well, they didn't blame Ruben. They didn't blame Electra. They blame me. You know, and it's like, how you blaming me and you don't even know how to market me? So so I kind of got disenchanted and uh, um, just took a break. I knew I could always work. So uh, making money wasn't the problem. So I went and I, I, I worked. And, and and lived and bought a place in Aruba and and traveled and you know until I, I felt it was time to do something that would make sense again because I, I just didn't believe in you know what what the industry was doing at that time and hip hop was taking over and it's like I'm not gonna do hip hop no you know it's like well you need to sound like Janet I'm not gonna sound like Janet you know I'm 
I'm Melissa. You know, I, I'm just not going to do it. So, so I took a break. Yeah. Huh. And, and what inspired you to finally come back and do another record? Oh, because because uh, what happened is that Hush Productions uh, came back into the the. I had done some things with other people. You know, was a little bit here, a little bit there, whatever. Like you said, JT Tail, I did some stuff, you know, something with him and, and some other people that would call me full force. I did a couple of records with them, you know, just as a feature. And um, then Hush Productions came back as Orpheus. And they said, okay, you know, we believe in you. Let's not get to that. We're going to do better this time. And, you know, let's let's get you back, you know, in the industry, you know, uh, like you want to be presented. So I came back because I was able to get back with people that believed in me. Well, yeah. certainly, Elsie, it's like a double album almost. I mean, a lot of music on there. You had it like built up all that time, I guess. Yeah. Well, well, the set came back and did a couple of tracks. Um uh, yeah, uh there were some other uh new producers that did some stuff so it it it, it really was a, 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 a we get back and we we gonna show them <laughs> that was one of those, we gonna show them what we about you know again that new york thing <laughs> no there's definitely some attitude dripping off that one i mean yeah and there's even some hip-hop influence on some of it yes it is and and uh um you know uh i remember it was was a great song and, but what happened is that, you know, unfortunately, even with that, the intentions was good, but the industry had changed it to such a money game. Uh, it, 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 people don't understand how much money it costs to get a hit record in this game. I wish I had the time and the energy to explain to them, but uh, it had become such a money game competing with the, the majors and then Orpheus coming out on their own with, um, I think now Rogers had a distribution deal with them. And it, be, it, it becomes a money game. Who's got the most money that can take the record to number one? Who's got the most money that can break a media base to get it to Billboard? Who's got, you know, it, it just became a money game. And that's when I started learning about, okay, what's going on here? Because it ain't me. And it ain't the music. So what's going on here? And that's when I started learning the behind the scenes of, uh, of the music industry. And thank God for me, you know, um, that I was a writer and, um, and I kept my publishing and stuff like that. Because had I not, I know so many artists that um, didn't write in, and uh, they suffered so you know, in their own right. They went out on the road and made money and stuff like that. But, you know, I didn't have to take and do a lot of things because checks were always coming in because of the foundation that I laid. Thank goodness yeah. for that. Wow. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I hear so many horror stories doing this show. I yeah. Mean, it's just um, heartbreaking a lot of times. Um, you know, some tracks on that, I mean, you redid the um, M2MA Lucas track on there. Um, back together again yeah, yeah yeah oh that was so much fun because like i said orpheus was coming back so of course when orpheus came back because freddie was signed with them too he came back you know because he was with hush we all were with hush and then when orpheus came back freddie signed with orpheus and he was starting to work on his thing we said hey well let's do something together finally because um uh um we hadn't done anything like that. He had wrote a song for me on, on one of my previous albums and I, I, I recorded it, but we hadn't done anything together. So we decided to do Back Together again. And it was a lot of fun because he's he's like my musical brother. You know, uh, I, I just love it. He took me to my first Grammys when he got nominated. He said, I'm taking Melissa. What better date than her? <laughs> <laughs> so you know he took me to the grammys you know when he got nominated we've just always been great friends and could talk to each other and and the love and his mother and everything so we we wanted to come full circle with that and i'm i'm glad we did that yeah <laughs> wow first grammys were you just starstruck oh yeah uh, uh um and 
And uh, he was too, because it was his first one too. <laughs> and they flew his first class. It was just so wonderful. And at that time, I had a, a, a young lady that uh, uh, made my outfits because, you know, it was the Doomy baby and everything and all that. She made all that, the leather and everything like that. He was like, we want something simple and pretty. And she made this beautiful red dress and I had the big hair. And, you know, we made People Magazine and all that, the, all the red carpet stuff. It was wonderful. And, and let me tell you, to this day, um, um, I always try, and I go to the Grammys a lot. I always try to wear red. Yeah, I always Tra try to wear tradition. red. Tradition. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know if there's something magical about 13 years, but I mean, you you had 13 years from um, Stone Love with you. Do I remember? Now it's another 13 until Love to Me. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh my God, I didn't know that. Yeah, Love Demands was uh, so much fun. Just getting getting my feet wet again. Because my, like I said, my thing is I will take a break rather than be mistreated. I, I, I'll just take a break because I can always work. And I always have, you know, thank God, money coming in. And I never, uh, um, I know people that bought the mansions and the penthouses and the, the, the big cars and stuff like that. And then when no money comes in, then, you know, all that stuff is gone. I, uh, my father taught me one thing. Um, the, the law of nature is the first law of nature is self-preservation. Make sure you live within your means. So, you know, when they was buying that, I was buying like, you know, that's the condo, one bedroom condo that I know that I could always pay for and it's no problem. I like my little Mercedes and stuff like that, but I don't, I don't think I've had a, a, a brand new Mercedes. I always bought, bought a used Mercedes, you know, like two years, you know, before the year, you know, something because as soon as you take it off the lot, it's, it's not going to be worth anything anyway. So uh, who knows it? It's a you know, in 2022 that you're driving a 2020 Mercedes, you know, who knows? Nobody, nobody knows that stuff. So, um, you know, I did that and, and, and invested in, you know, my house here in Aruba and, you know, now I'm building a house. So um, I, I, I just took a break. And during that time, Cleopatra Records would call me to redo my stuff because they wanted catalog. So they would call, recall me to do Do Me Baby on like one of their compilation albums or, or uh, Fool's Paradise. And I would say, yeah, they pay me and I do it. And, and they enjoyed working with me and said, you know what? Let's do a whole album, uh, you know, six cover songs, six new songs. So we did, yeah. And, and, and it was wonderful working with them again learning the music industry now with them i know that when you're working with an independent you got to make sure you have your marketing and and your advertisement and you have to have that that budget separate from you know oh, i got my little advance and they're going to pay for the studio time and all that stuff because when the record comes out they're only going to do a certain amount and then once their budget is done, they're done because they're independent and they've got to move on to someone else. So now, you know, I've learned those lessons. Did the cover song choices more reflect like your tastes or were they ones that were brought to you? There were, there were a little bit of both. Uh, I, I would go in and say, I want to do these. And they'd say, well, what about this song? You know, so they got two and I got four. Yeah, yeah. And then, like you said, new new tracks were on there. I mean, there were some funky tracks on that one too. Hollow and uh, No More. I um, mean, were... Yeah, and, 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 and what they did, there's a gentleman named Brady Ghazi. Um, and and uh, we he just had these tracks that were just sitting around. And, and the gentleman that put the deal together said, I got someone, you know, uh, I just want you to hear his tracks. And he would send tracks over and I said, oh, God, I like that one. He was like, oh, I don't like that one. Then we'd come back like, you know, two weeks later. Oh, I like that one. You know what I'm saying? So we just, uh, after we started hearing it, it was like I started writing to them and writing to them. And then one weekend, I just uh, just bogged down and, and wrote all the tracks and said, here they are. What do you think? And I actually, you know, because now... I, I recorded it right on my iPhone, you know, 
sang it right in my iPhone with the music and sent it to Cleopatra for them to approve it. And once they approve it, then we went in the studio. Yeah. Wow, that's easy. Yeah. So <laughs> and, and guess who I got that from? Taylor Taylor Swift. Because she 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 says I, I record everything on my phone. So I got it from Taylor Swift watching a documentary of hers. Yeah. Uh, I had down here a note about the Grammys. Yes, yes. And and so this year when we were nominated, we we, we I only had a single with uh Footprints of an Angel, unfortunately. So we tried to do uh, you know, a traditional of course RB, but we tried to do uh uh, visual media, but the movie is not out yet. So then they sent me a letter and said, we can't uh, confirm the official release of the movie. So when when it actually comes out, you can resubmit. Yeah. Oh, technicality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, t t tell us about that recording, though. How did uh, that come together? And I mean, it's gotten so much attention for you. It's been a, a, a great year for you, really. It, it, it really has. And, and I'm so surprised because, you know, it's independent and I'm learning so, so, so much. And I wish I could just take everything I'm learning and just put it out there and then everybody else can learn. But, you know, you can't do that. Uh, uh, they might kick me out the business because then I'll tell everybody the secrets. So but um, uh, they, they during the pandemic. They called me and asked me to do a movie. And they asked me to play the mother of, of a young lady who's out in the streets, you know, doing drugs and everything, has a child and, you know, messes up her life. But then she cleans her life back up and, and she comes back home and we're, we're happy. And then, you know, after she comes home, she finds out she has cancer and she dies. And I have to sing at my own daughter's funeral. So, um, uh, it was wonderful. We didn't even get to shoot it until, you know, at the, the, the pandemic, right in the middle of the pandemic, everybody was wearing masks and everything, you know. Then they say, shoot, we take the mask off. <laughs> you know, shoot it. Okay, put the mask on. Uh, stay away, you know, stay away from me. But uh, it, um, so I did my part, um, sang at the funeral, everything like that. And, uh, when I came home after uh, shooting my scenes, I was like, you know, okay, so where's the theme song for this? And they didn't have a theme song. They said, well, if you write it, uh, uh, we'll definitely use it if we like it. And uh, so that weekend I was at home and, and I don't know, it was just uh, a David Ruffin unsung came on and it was like, oh my God, if I could, if I could do a, a female David Ruffin recording in in 2021 how you know that was like 2020 2021 how fabulous would that be you know would, would they really get the the heart of of rb and how how well this man you know delivered you know vocally and um i was like i i think i could do that and then um i'm on the internet and ain't nothing like the real thing comes on I was like, what if we put those two together because uh, that's the same era. And my fiance, uh, Sebastian, he writes beats. You know, he does beats. And he came home and I was like, I, I don't want the whole thing. I just want this one beginning piece of this. If I can get that looped, I think, and, and I can sing this the way I want to with what I'm thinking, I think we might have something. So we did it. And uh, we, we were just uh, elated until uh, uh, we tried to get it cleared. <laughs> and Sony said, well, we want, you know, 15,000 for this and 7,000 for that. And we want 60% for that and da 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 I was like, I can't give you all of that. But uh, I do know Valerie Simpson. So let me give her a call and tell her what's going on. And I called Valerie and, and told her what was going on. And she contacted Sony and said, leave her alone and let her fly. And that's how we got Footprints of an Angel. Yep. Wow. Went to the source, pulled out the big uh, yes. guns. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Wow. Yeah, so, she, so, 
She played piano on one of your CDs. Yeah. Yeah, she did. And we did it a little snippet of ain't nothing like the real thing. Ain't that something? Right. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so they did and they left us alone and, and, and that's that. And, and here we are and, and they'll get their percentage and I'll get mine and, you know, and, and, and we'll go on, but all that, Oh, we got to give me this. And I want that. And I want that. And all that just went away. Just went away. Yeah. Wow. Did you cut that? Do you have a home studio or how'd you lay that down? Uh, uh, my fiance did it in his computer. And then um, my musical director, uh, uh, oh my goodness, Devern, Devern. Uh, he has a, a home studio and we went in his studio and, and recorded it because we want to help everybody. We want everybody to to be a part. He had really nice the uh, home studio. It had the little, you know, stuff on the wall. And we're in the basement recording. He actually actually is Carol um, Williams' uh, son. And uh, we recorded it and, it and it came out great. And he came up with ideas of the, of, uh, you know, uh, the background parts and stuff, having the effect on it. That was him. And uh, it was wonderful. He's happy. We're happy. And you know, it, it turned out really, really good. And and radio embraced it. They really embraced it. And, and I released it on my own label, Asylum Productions. And uh, so it's my first independent um, project. And it was really, really great. But again, I, everybody tells me I need to do a podcast because even independently, there are things that you just have to know about this industry in order to get to those levels yeah oh, so congratulations on it yeah yeah, yeah. we did we, we did really good and it's one of the most successful um independent songs of 2022 so we're, we're happy about that and we're learning and the next one's going to be better and better and better because we're going to do an ep yeah all right yeah um yeah, I mean, lyrically, you know, it's melancholy and, and stuff, but the but the music is a nice juxtaposition with that, you know, because the music's more upbeat. And... Yeah, yeah. And, and we're, we're going to do something that's a real surprise. We talked about uh, Kashif, we're going to do something uh, with, with, with his music that we're very, very excited about. Yeah, because it, I don't want anyone to forget. I don't want them to forget him. Yeah, so uh, if I can do something to help that, I'm going to do it. When do you think uh, the EP might get done? Uh, we'll probably release another single uh, around uh, March again of next year. April was a good uh, a good month for us, so it'll be, you know, I don't want to, nobody is messing with Christmas. And by the way, you know, I have a, a Christmas uh, little EP out that has like two songs on it, the Cleopatra release. Uh, that radio is playing. So we're excited about that and hoping that we do some, you know, just a little television because nobody can compete with Mariah. <laughs> nobody can compete with Mariah around Christmas. So we're not trying to do that. We just try to get our feet wet, you know, and just kind of splash around her if we can. <laughs> but we're hoping by March of, of next year, we'll have another single. And during that time, we'll still be working on the EP. Yeah. Wow. How does it feel to be back in the limelight again? Well, it, it, it feels good. And then, you know, and, and then it's that fight, you know, because un unfortunately, you know, I manage myself. Uh, it, it's an independent thing, and which we were looking for PR people. And, you know, everybody's so busy and, you know, they want the, the, the big names and all that. So, so we, we, we're just chugging along little by little. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, don't forget about me. Notice me over here. Magazine cover here. This over here. You know, uh, we're working here. And guess what? I'm doing a wonderful show with someone I never thought that I would do a show with. Okay, first I'm doing a show with Roy Ayers uh, the day after uh, Thanksgiving, which is wonderful. And then uh, Fox Soul TV is doing an episode on me called Tracks and Tales, where I, I sing my stuff in the studio and then I talk about it, which is wonderful. And that comes on the day after Thanksgiving. But I'm doing a show in Miami with Marsha Ambrosia. 
Can you believe that? Wow. Marsha Ambrosia is is Floetry. The, the, the Floetry group, yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, and she's come out with, you know, her own stuff. And I, you know, but I was like, oh, I never because she's like neo soul kind of like uh poetry, that kind of song. And I'm kind of like R and B, traditional R and B. And they they have us on the same show together in Miami. And I'm like, that is going to be so and and, and uh RL from Next is on the show, which is great. But but her her style in R and B and our style is is like totally different. And 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 I'm so excited about that. That's great. You're crossing, you know, generations, getting new fans. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm really excited about doing a show with her. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Um well, first off, where can people get that single and, you know, uh, where should they go website wise and, and what should they do to keep up with everything that you're doing? Well, you know, I have my own website, uh, melissamorgan1.com. So you can go there and uh, check out everything. We need to put up the new dates. I think we have the new dates up there, uh, new photos and all that stuff. Um the social media, just Melissa Morgan. And just uh, know this, it's Melissa with one L and one S. And that's how you always find me. M-E-L-I, accent mark, S. So you don't have to put the accent mark in there. But uh, um, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. I don't know how long I'm going to be on Twitter. <laughs> I don't know if I want to pay the eight bucks. You know, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, Cause I don't, I don't even think I have a blue check mark. I don't even know, but um, you can find me on there. I have a Melissa Morgan fan page and all that good stuff. And and I even have a Melissa a lifestyles with Melissa Morgan where I talk about my cooking and crocheting and and my fruit sticks and all that stuff. So uh, you know, just just go on social media. And I finally started doing TikTok. I I didn't believe in it at first, but I'm. I'm now doing a little TikTok skits and stuff. And uh, I went to Dubai recently and I did a little skit on TikTok. And I was like, oh, okay, I can do TikTok every other day. That's kind of cool. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. You're, you're, you're adapting, that's for sure. Yeah. We, oh, yeah. You have yeah. to adapt because it, it, it's not going to stop for you. It's not going to stop, but it's just going to keep going. It's going to be something else. And as you can see with Twitter, it's going to be something else. And and when they do something, Instagram is going to do something and Facebook. So, you know, we got to keep up. Yeah. <laughs> one, one last question for you. And that yeah. is, um, what are your own three favorite tracks? Oh, my gosh. A, a song called I Love No More With You. Uh, Cause I'll never forget. Um, I was at Madison Square Garden, and um, I went to see Whitney Houston, and she had uh, did the national anthem for the uh, the uh, the women's the W W B A, and then she was coming through to do her show, and they had invited me to her show. And when she seen me, she said, "Melissa, I love no more with you. That's my favorite song." I was like, oh, you gotta be kidding me, girl. And she started singing it with me. And that's wow. like one of the last memories I have with us singing together. So I love no more with you. Uh, do you still love me? For sure. And uh, let's see, Fool's Paradise. Yeah, because because it, it does something to people when I sing that song. And then that touches me to let me know that, that I have something that makes you feel good. Yeah. Wow. And are there one or two overlooked gems that you feel in your catalog that people maybe should go back and really give it, enough, you know, fresh ears or if they missed it wow. somehow? You're all that I got, whether or not you know it. That one, you're all I got. And um, getting to know you, getting to know you getting to know you better yeah all right yeah <laughs> love it um thank you so much for for doing this and thank you so much for the fantastic music through the years oh thank you thank you it's wonderful and i see you i see your prints 
I see you got your Prince thing and the Lakers. Come on now. I, I like from, Steph. I like Steph Curry. <laughs> I'm a Steph Curry fan. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, well, LeBron. Well, I'm right, I, 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 I'm sorry I'm playing college because I'm right near Davidson College. So. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. North, North Carolina. No, that is really wonderful. We keep we we keep we keep Prince alive. We keep these people alive, Kashif and all these wonderful people that we lost. You know, we're gonna keep you alive one way or another. You know, and did you see? I, and I hate to say that because uh, Whitney's Pat Pat Houston, who runs her estate and everything, she just sent it to me. Uh, um, they they they're doing a whole thing with Whitney too, where they're gonna have like a makeup line, a makeup line for Whitney. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So they, uh, people are doing wonderful things to to keep all these really talented people and 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 their energy and spirit alive, and I love it. You know. How do you feel about like the hologram thing? N I don't know about that now. <laughs> I ain't even gonna lie about. I don't know about that one, but uh, I I will get the makeup line. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sold on the hologram thing. <laughs> I, I don't know about it's that. Kind of creepy yeah. or something. I don't know. It, yeah, there are some things that are just creepy, and you just have to leave it alone. Yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, God is good. I'm thankful to be alive, and, and spirit is gone, so she's somewhere. And I look forward to you know just being in the city, you know, uh, uh, near you real soon. So check me out and uh, follow me. All right, and I'll see you soon. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Truth in Rhythm. A big thank you goes out to our guest as well as to you, the viewer and listener. Also, much gratitude to Pleasure for supplying the show's funky opening and closing music. As a reminder, you can always access the complete list of linked shows by episode at funkinstuff.net. I urge you to support this program and receive the extra benefits along with that by subscribing to the Funk and Stuff channel on YouTube and sharing it with funk, R&B, and jazz lovers, joining Truth and Rhythm's membership program at Patreon, submitting a donation at funkandstuff.net, buying Everything is on the One, the first guide to funk book at Amazon, shopping at the Funky Things store for cool merchandise at funkandstuff.net, and linking through funkinstuff.net for all of your Amazon purchases. In addition, if you're an artist or anyone seeking proven results-oriented professional marketing, PR, writing, or editing consultation or production, check out the media services section at funkinstuff.net. Also, I encourage you to drop me a line at scottg at funkinstuff.net. I love the feedback, suggestions, guest requests, appearance and sponsorship inquiries, and just talking about my favorite subject, groove-based music. For now, and as always, this is Scott Dr. GX Goldfine saying, keep on keep vibing on to the rhythm of the one.